Hey folks, so today we're going to have a look at um, climate change and global warming but with a view to looking at adaptation and mitigation strategies as part of the AQA syllabus. So I want to start by, um, and, and don't worry if you get this wrong, just have a go, um, nobody can really draw a perfect circle, but just draw a circle to represent the earth and it's a pretty sad earth, not very happy earth so you can have a little sad face. And it's sad because it's heating up too quickly because of global warming brought about by the enhanced greenhouse effect. So we're going to draw some little flames to represent that. And we're going to write global warming. Now it's important not to get confused between kind of the two things that are going on here. The globe is warming, some places faster than others, for instance up in the Arctic it's rising at four or five degrees but on average, when you average it all out, it's about one degree. But what's also happening at the same time is something called climate change and that's different. It's linked to global warming, it's because of global warming, but climate change is things like sort of extreme weather events happening a bit more. So we're seeing kind of more storms. So if you want to put storm cloud in, we're seeing basically the frequency and the intensity of storms going up. Uh, so more storms, likewise, I draw a sun here. We're also seeing more, more droughts. A drought is when there is a period of very dry weather uh, for weeks, sometimes months in some places. And then leading on from that, we can often find, these are trees, uh, wildfires, so, or bushfires, and some forest fires, they're sometimes called. And again, I'm gonna draw one of my flames in there. The flames can reach the top of the trees, in fact, but I'm just gonna draw them like that for now, so. The incidence of wildfires, the amount of them, the severity of them is going up. Um, and all of this, if we're thinking about climate, we think about weather, yes, but we're also thinking about temperature. And that has gone up quite drastically. So we're gonna write in there, temperature increase. Okay, so we know we know what the problem is, we know what global warming is, we've done, um, I've got another infographic on the greenhouse effect and what's causing that. Today's infographic is really looking at what we can do about it. So there are two things that we're going to discuss. So if you draw two big arrows, the first one is something called mitigation. Now mitigation, mitigation, there we go, mitigation strategies. These are things that essentially are there to try and reduce both global warming and climate change. They are not ways that we're adapting to it, but actually ways to slow it down. We now know that we can't stop it, unfortunately, but we can slow it down and we can um, do a lot to kind of reduce those effects. So if you want to just put in brackets, it's about reducing kind of climate change, okay, and, and, and stopping it being so bad or as bad as um, it's predicted. Then on the other side, we've got something called adaptation strategies. Now these don't, do not try and solve the problem. These are only focused on how to reduce the impacts in the short term to, to help our lifestyle, to, to enable us to keep uh, food on the table, to stop homes from flooding. They are not having any impact on actually dealing with the problem. So we're actually gonna start with, where should we start? Should we start with actually dealing with the problem? So we, we know that global warming is caused by burning fossil fuels. That's one of the biggest problems. So the first strat strategy, say that properly, first strategy is to actually switch our reliance, our energy supply from fossil fuels uh, to renewables. 
And I've seen this happen, I've been teaching now 14 years, and when I started out renewables, so it's back in 2009, uh, renewables were about 5% of our electricity. And now they are, well, often about 40, 45%. So it's gone up hugely. So we need to switch our energy supplies from fossil fuels, which is oil, coal, and gas, to renewables. Now, it's not enough to just put renewables because AQA would expect you to talk about those renewables. So, the first one is solar, which works obviously really well in hot countries. We have solar here, we have some solar farms, but it's not, um, it's not our biggest one by any means. However, wind power is huge in the UK. So I'm just going to draw a little turbine. We have Anglia One, which is a huge wind farm, and we out off the um, east coast and nearer where I teach, uh, near Sussex, well, in Sussex, we have um, a huge wind farm just off the coast of Brighton. We also have biomass, which we burn to create gas. This is plant-based. So I'm just going to draw some, some leaves to remind us that. So it's working with natural materials and we also have hydroelectric and that can include tidal um, as well as inland hydro so that's from water so we need to move to really a hundred percent renewables uh, unfortunately we're not there yet right secondly we can do something called carbon capture now this is relatively new it was started in um, Iceland and what they've done is they've actually provided all the information on how to do this basically for free and basically encouraged the rest of the world to get on board and to start making these. Now I can't really get into this in a huge way but essentially what happens um, in Iceland, what they do is they suck in the CO2 that's in the air, which is, you know, in, in all of our atmosphere. And basically that CO2 is then sent down. It goes down about um, two kilometers into the ground. And then it is essentially uh, calcified. It becomes rock. So after two years, it, it kind of becomes a sort of calcium uh, rock. Okay, um, so that's not the best try, but it gives you a bit of an idea of what goes on. And like I said, they've provided that for free. Um, and then lastly, uh, I know there's other there's electric vehicles, there's walking and cycling, but as a big one, one I guess I would encourage you to use in an exam is international agreements. International agreements. Now, we we have recently had um, a huge summit in um, in Glasgow, and that was part of the COP twenty six program. But the big one that's that's last happened is the uh, twenty sixteen one in Paris, um, and there will be another one soon. But essentially, this is where countries around the world. These are countries, not clouds. Um, get together, the world leaders get together from the biggest nations, you know, the United Nations, the present, and others. And they they all travel to one country and they meet and they agree to lower emissions. That's the main thing that comes out of this. Uh, and the one that came out of, 20, of uh, 2016 in Paris was that we would be carbon neutral by 2050. And we're not there yet, but it's also not 2050. So we're on our way. But these, these mitigation strategies will literally change what's going on with the Earth. They will reduce global warming because we won't be emitting so much emissions from fossil fuels. 
we will be pulling in the fossil, the CO2 that's in the atmosphere, therefore not contributing to the greenhouse effect. And by creating these international agreements, we won't be effect, you know, making things worse in the future. But global warming's here. Climate change is here. And we've got to deal with that in a way that protects people uh, and their property. So let's go through some of our adaptation strategies. Right, for the first one, if you just draw a line and put land, and we know it's land because I'm going to draw some really basic houses that look a little bit like beach huts, I agree. Um, and then let's have some waves, not great waves, but there we go. Um, and obviously this is to represent the sea, but also to represent a storm surge, which we're starting to see more of in these extreme weather events. Now what you can do as, a, as your first adaptation strategy is you can draw on, sorry, let's level that back, you can draw on some rock armour. So just some jagged lumps of granite or rock, which can be placed on the beach. So we draw a little arrow. We're going to write sea defences. And the one I've drawn here is rock armour. Of course, there are others. Put a great big seawall there. But it's a little bit cheaper to put rock armour in place. And that helps protect against rising sea levels and also those storm surges. So that's number one. It won't last forever, but it's going to help people adapt to a changing climate. For the second one, again, we're going to draw some land. And this time we're going to draw some plants. In real life, they'd be much closer together and they'd have a lot more leaves on them. But this is to look, uh, essentially to look at farming and agriculture. We're experiencing more droughts, hotter summers, and across the world, well, also cold, some colder conditions as well, basically more extreme weather. Um, so what we need is our crops, our food supply to be stable. So what you can do is get GM crops. GM stands for genetically modified. And you would be expected to say how they are modified. So the two ways that I want you to remember, the first one is they are salt uh, water resistant. And that means if there's a flood and an extreme weather event and the sea floods in, like as shown above, the crops won't die. Okay, they can be genetically modified in a lab to be tolerant of some salt water. Doesn't mean they can be watered with salt water, it just means they will tolerate, you know, the odd flood. And the other thing is they can be made more drought resistant because water supply is very difficult and we want crops that will grow even if there isn't as much water around. Okay, talking of water supply, let's make that our next one. We'll draw a big water droplet. Well, ish big. Let's have a few. Well, oh, it looks like a nose. Let's put a few more in. There we go. Um, so what we can do is we can move water from an area of water surplus, which basically means there's lots of water. Like we've drawn lots of water droplets there. It can basically be moved and transported. So draw little water droplets along here. Okay, this is um, happening in the UK at the moment. So often we move water, it takes about three or four days from Kilda water up in the north east of England uh, to the sort of London area, Oxfordshire area. And we move it to an area, draw smaller water droplets, of water stress. These regions like London and the southeast are areas that have very little water. Um, very little rainfall, essentially, um, and often high populations. So we're going to see more of this for climate change, so we might have to look, I'm just going to make that a bit bigger, we're going to have to look at more ways to basically get this water moved. I'm just going to draw it in. It takes, like I said, three to four days to pump it. It's not cheap, it does use energy, so it's not like an absolutely amazing situation to be in, but water is essential. Okay, 
Right, last one, and it's such a classic. I know we talked about carbon capture earlier and that being a really good mitigation strategy, but this one is so natural and it does it all on its own. And these are trees. So just draw a tree exactly like you would have done at primary school. It really doesn't matter what kind of tree you draw. Let's have lots of trees. Absolutely love trees. Now this is called, the proper word for this is afforestation. Okay, I'm going to put that in capitals. Afforestation. Now that is the opposite of deforestation. So it is basically planting trees. Trees naturally do what carbon capture does with huge amounts of technology, is they take in CO2 from the atmosphere. And what they do is they that CO2 ends up in the trunk of the tree, ends up in the timber. And then it is stored away from the atmosphere. And the more trees we have, the more CO2 that they'll take in through the leaves, but it is stored in the trunk of the tree. And so long as we don't cut them down and burn them, it'll stay there. So there you go. It was a quick run through. But these things, they're important, and they're important not just for exam, but also to know about for the future.